Hi, welcome to the Belfry. This is the Brabazon Golf Course, the seventh hole. And in this video, we're going to go through what I call the three death moves in the golf swing. Three things that you need to avoid to ensure you play some better golf. Just before we do go through exactly what they are, in the corner of the screen, you should have the details for my Facebook, for my Twitter, and for my Instagram. So if you haven't done already, then please go ahead and follow me on those. So the video today is looking at three things that I see really, really commonly which cause golfers to hit some of the poorest shots, so the weakest shots, the slice shots, and the poorest strikes. Now, all those things, those shots, are caused by things that are happening down at impact. So if the ball flight is curving too much, we've got issues with the path and the face, we know that. So what happens at impact determines the ball flight, that's fine. What we're gonna do in this video is look at what precedes that, so maybe what happens in the downswing or the end of the backswing, which leads to those poor impact alignments. So, the first thing that I want you to try and avoid is a club shaft which is far too steep in transition. So by steep, we mean a club shaft which is getting towards vertical. Some golfers will actually get it about vertical. And we're looking at this in transition by the end of the early downswing. So the early downswing, or the end of it, would be when my lead arm is about horizontal. So, I see lots of golfers struggle because in transition by the end of this early downswing position they have the club shaft far too steep from here it is incredibly difficult to control the path and to get that path consistently where you want it you're probably going to find that you have a path which is to the left unless you try and do something to try and fix that but it's not consistent so the first thing i want you to try and avoid is a club shaft which steepens as you start to make your downswing what I would actually love you to do is get to the top and actually have the grip end pointing slightly outside the ball line by the end of this early downswing. From here, provided there's some other things in there as well, not just on its own, that is definitely going to help you move the club better through the impact area. So point number one to avoid is a steep club shaft in transition. The second thing I would really like you to try and avoid in your golf swing is having a cupped or what we call extended lead wrist. If we have a cupped or extended lead wrist, what that means is that generally the club face will be twisted to the right in the downswing or as we call it open. If it's twisted to the right and it's open, you are probably going to find that you tend to hit a lot of your shots to the right of your target. If you do try and fix this, you will be fixing it by releasing the club very early. If we release the club very early, we can often get the club face to point a little bit more towards our target, but we often compromise our ability to strike the ball. We often compromise our ability to deliver the golf club with the right kind of loft on the right attack angle. And if we do hit the ball straight, it's often very weak, it's very high, doesn't feel particularly well hit. And we often find that those golfers struggle with strikes as a whole. So the second thing I want you to avoid is an extended lead wrist where the club face is open. Therefore, it would be a good idea if you work towards the opposite. So in your transition, it would be not a bad idea to try and feel that you arch the wrist and get the club face feeling like it's pointing a little bit more away from you as opposed to towards you. So thinking about the logo on your glove and where that points is a very, very good way to try and eliminate this move from your game. So there's our first two points. The third thing I want you to try and avoid is extending the body too early. So extending the body would be basically creating some angles at setup, but then losing those angles. So we tend to see the hips coming slightly in and the head going slightly up. And I would suggest that this is going to be more detrimental to you if it's happening in transition. So I see lots of golfers who, as they go from backswing to downswing, are already starting to lose those angles. If this is you, if you're starting to gain height as you come towards halfway down, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to pivot correctly through the ball. It's going to be extremely difficult for you to get the right strike, to get the handle forwards, all of those things. Now, unfortunately, I very, very often see all of these three things happening together. Unfortunately, these are often the worst golfers that I see, the golfers that really can't control the strike. They really can't control the curve on a golf ball and they really struggle with distance. So it would not be uncommon for me to see a golfer 
make what may well look like a pretty orthodox backswing, but as they start down, they're doing all of those three things. I've got that club shaft extremely steep. I've got the wrist extending the face open, and I've started to lose my angles far too early. From here, my best option is a poorly struck high shot that goes very, very short distance. So, it would not be a bad idea to recognize what the opposite to those positions feel like. As a whole, and obviously there are exceptions to the rule, we would tend to see the better golfers have the club shaft flatter, have the lead wrist flatter, and actually in transition start to flex the body more. Now, when I flex the body more, it may appear that I'm losing height. This is certainly a topic at the moment, especially with Tiger Woods. There was a lot of talk about him losing height and he got sort of, for me, a raw deal with that. Potentially he loses a little bit too much height, but if you watch a lot of golfers across all tours, you will see a slight lowering of the body in the transition period. To me, this is absolutely fine. I don't want you to try and do it, but it's often a result of doing some other good things. So let's take a starting position and let's just make some backswings and feel like as we transition to downswing, we're starting to create some of the opposite things. I've got my lead wrist flexed, which means the club's pointing more away from me. I've got the club shaft flatter, and I've started to flex the body a little bit more. For me, this is a much, much better position for you to be able to pivot correctly, deliver the right kind of loft, deliver the right kind of attack angle, and deliver a very, very good path with good body rotation. So, you may well do one of those three things. You may well do two of those three things. Unfortunately, you may well do three. It's not uncommon to see golfers doing all three. And I say, they're often the golfers who struggle the most with strike and ball flight. So hopefully that information is gonna help you. I'm gonna try and hit one to this seventh hole. I've got a seven iron here. The flag is pretty well tucked up on that left-hand side. So I might just try and go a little bit right of it, but let's see if I can put all those three things into a golf swing and hopefully hit a decent shot onto the green. Okay, that's pretty good. A little bit right at the flag, but not too bad. Okay, so those are what I call the three death moves. They are very, very common. Lots of golfers fall into them and they tend to struggle through the impact area and we want to try and fix those. So hopefully that video is helping. If it did help you, please hit the like button. Post any comments you have down below and if you haven't done already, then please subscribe to my channel. Absolutely free, no cost whatsoever. Just means I'll be able to get more of this content to you on a more regular basis and that's hopefully going to help you play some better golf and more importantly, enjoy your golf a little bit more. So thank you for watching, and hopefully we'll see you back here again soon.